Hi, are you struggling to get top spin on your forehand? In today's lesson, I'm gonna teach you a series of exercises and drills that are gonna help you produce massive top spin. So what is top spin? And if you're looking to become an advanced tennis player, you need to not only know what topspin is, but you also need to know how to produce it and use it to your advantage to create lots of different shot opportunities. So specifically, topspin is when you make the ball roll forward in the same direction it's going. So if I'm hitting the ball that way, it is actually spinning and roll in that way in the air. And what that produces is a pocket of air or air pressure on the top of the ball and makes the ball want to descend. So the value of that, it allows you to hit the ball with a lot of confidence get nice clearance over the net and still get the ball to drop in the court. So when you're playing under pressure, you can still accelerate the racket and you can take the fear out of playing the ball. You can see the balls dropping very aggressively down on the court. And once you get the skill down, you can vary that spin tremendously to hit short angles, hit high looping balls, hit driving balls that are safe, all those different things you can do. So we want to learn how to not only hit massive topspin, but we also want to learn how to vary the topspin to create different shots as we play. So how do we get topspin? Well, in order to get topspin on the ball, the racket has to move from low to high as it's making contact with the ball. So the racket face is going to be coming from below the level of contact and rising up into contact. Low to high. And that movement pattern can be adjusted and varied quite a bit so you can increase or decrease the spin. So there are some myths out there that the racket comes in and rolls over the ball to produce topspin, but that is proven to be impossible to do because the ball is really only on the strings for a very fraction of a second. I think it's 1 25th of a second, perhaps. So there's no way you could ever make the ball spin by rolling. So if you are watching players roll the wrist, the ball is long gone, and that's just a byproduct of their natural movement after contact. So let's just dissolve that myth right now. We're not gonna be trying to play with the wrist or roll the racket head over so we make contact. We are gonna get the racket head to move from low to high. And the steeper the racket moves up into the ball, the more acceleration you have on the ball, the more spin you get. And the more you level that off, the more less spin you get, the more ball speed you get. So as you play, you're gonna to start to learn how to blend ball speed and spin speed together to get different effects on the ball. But the key is, is that when the ball is coming in to, to play, that you're anticipating the height of the ball, you know how high it's gonna be, and you make sure the racket falls below. And the ideal position below the ball is approximately 12 to 18 inches. You don't need to go any lower than that to get as much topspin as you like. Because the, the ball doesn't know how low you come from, it just knows the path you take as you come onto the ball. And you can produce a pretty steep path by just getting a foot to 18 inches below the ball. So it's a bit of a myth to think you're gonna get way underneath to get a lot of topspin. That's not gonna help you. So when you're out practicing, you wanna anticipate the height of the ball and you wanna let the racket head drop below and then let that drop produce momentum to bring to the ball and make sure that the racket head is rising as it comes into contact. Step two is really understanding where the ideal contact point is to produce topspin on the forehand. So. If we're gonna get the top spin, we've gotta be in a place where the racket head is gonna naturally begin to ascend in, inside of a powerful swing. And more naturally, that's gonna be out in front of you because it's at this point in the movement where my arm is naturally rising. So if we just match that rising arm with a racket rising, we're gonna be able to produce quite a bit of top spin. Now your contact point will vary somewhat based on your style, including the grip you use, but if you're in a classic Eastern grip or semi-Western grip, the contact point is going to be comfortably out in front of you, almost the distance that you'd open doors or shake hands or do something here where you've got nice balance and nice control coming in. So it's in this area that you would be making contact and it's very comfortable and natural for the racket to be rising through that area. If the ball is late and behind you, it's gonna get pretty tricky to, to produce massive topspin or even control the topspin, because at that point in time, you're just desperate to keep the ball in play. So we've got to get prepared, and we've got to get out in front to make the contact. And step number three is understanding how to get the racket to move and really make a low to high movement to get a lot of spin on the ball. And this is often misunderstood. And what we don't want to be doing is using a lot of wrists to do this. What we want to be using is the long axis rotation of the forearm. So when I, when I move into my forehand, 
and my racket drops to its lowest point, the racket is below the hand. And as it comes up, it's even with the hand, and then it goes above the hand. And there could be a softness in the wrist that allows for a little play in there, but I'm not really trying to actively make the racket move through the wrist. I'm really using the long axis from the shoulder. And that's gonna not only produce more control, but it's also gonna give you a lot more power and a lot more spin. So the racket's below the hand, it comes up to join the hand, and it moves above the hand. And that is how you're going to get all of that spin on the ball without using your wrist so much. So we don't wanna be flicking the wrist or flipping it or trying to play with the hand. Let that power come from your core and through your shoulder in a long axis rotation. So I'm gonna show you a couple of drills that are gonna help you really practice and produce a lot of top spin. And the first one you can just simply do by yourself. And that's just getting up close to the net, dropping the ball low, and then getting the ball to clear the net and land in the court. So the only way I could do this is if I'm really spinning the ball, getting a lot of rotation on it up and over. And that is gonna help you really get that low to high action, get a lot of spin on the ball. And then when you're playing and you get a ball in this area that's below the level of the net, you're gonna have the feel of grabbing the ball and spinning it and controlling it and playing an offensive shot from what could, could be an awkward position, but you'll get skillful enough so you can make it play this ball with confidence. Next drill requires a practice partner. And this is kind of fun. We're actually gonna try to get low to high on this ball and get the ball to clear the basket. And there's a couple of different ways we can do it. The first thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna have my partner just drop the ball and I'm gonna clear the basket. Oh, oh, cleared it, cleared it, good. Up and over. So the sensation of having the ball leave the strings on an upward path to clear an object will help you to really get that low to high swing action, get that lot of spin on the ball. The next phase on this is where the, the practice partner tosses the ball from an adjacent position and I have to take a ball that I'm actually receiving and getting it over. Let's see how we do with this one. So, kind of tricky to do that. You gotta be careful because the ball could rebound and come back to you, but I think that it really gives you the sensation of, hey, I don't wanna get hit with the ball, so I'm gonna make sure I get below and I grab that ball and have that ball leave, or leave my strings on an upward path out towards the target area into the court. And now we're gonna do a live ball drill that's gonna help you really get the feel for producing topspin. And we're gonna play short court and control the ball because it's very difficult to learn and hit a lot of topspin off of a ball that has a lot of ball speed coming to you. So we're gonna slow the ball down and we're gonna learn the skill of the sensation of grabbing the ball and spinning it in a, in a slow motion environment. So, if you get out and do the slow motion tennis, it's gonna help you really get the feel of grabbing that ball and using the racket at speed to produce the spin rather than the ball speed. So if you can get the feel of this, then you can start to implement more ball speed and discover the different combinations of spins and speeds to produce all the different shots you'd like. In this scenario, what we're doing here is what you often see high level professionals, WTA and HTP players doing to warm up their strokes. They actually start in the midcourt and get the feel of the strokes and the spins and grabbing the ball and controlling the ball and then they gradually move back. So this is a great place to start to build your top spin forehand. I hope you really enjoyed and benefited from today's lesson. I strongly encourage you to take these ideas and concepts to the court and practice them and really improve your top spin forehand and make it a really quality weapon. Please like, comment, subscribe here to this channel. Turn on your notifications because we're releasing new content every week and we don't want you to miss out on our latest videos. And also, if you wanna learn more, click on the link down below and gain access to our free library of lessons on our website, where I reveal all the key fundamental principles you need to learn on every shot in tennis to achieve your full potential. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.